Here we are again with another XRP video. It's been days and days of shoulder deep research in XRP. And it's changing everything for me. And it's on one hand very frustrating because everything I've talked about on this channel so far has been very much reliant on Fibonacci extension tools and TA that's, that's helped me so far in crypto. But then I come to XRP, I learn more about XRP, and I'm just realizing that my whole idea, my whole strategy of retiring in crypto is changing. And I have to tell everyone here because I've been talking about that plan of retiring and how that's going to look and what you do, you take your crypto out, you sell it, and then you move into fiat or whatever it is or in get some cash flow and that pays for your lifestyle and while that still is the same it's vastly different now exit points are different my whole th thought process on how i'm exiting why i'm exiting what i'm exiting into it's all changing and i'm getting to that in this video so if you've been a long time follower of this channel get your notepad out because this is how I'm probably going to do things. Decisions haven't been made yet. This is probably how I'm going to do things from here. This isn't a fleshed out plan of action. I'm telling you the whole process as a whole and how it's different now. So the first thing to acknowledge, I think here is basically referring to a video I made previously in the last couple of videos, which have been doing fantastically. Thank you for the support. It was basically on the topic of XRP's price chart being a complete lie. And the more I learn, the more that is a reality. I'm learning more and more that actually market cap isn't related really to a, a coin's price. That's not what it's actually about. What a market cap doesn't display and why it's not a good indicator for price is that it doesn't display use case potential. So when you look at a coin, okay, let's say Dogecoin, for example, a meme coin, the market cap's pretty accurate because it has no use case apart from the occasional place that take it as payment, but it has no like global use case, like for example, an XDC or an XLM or an XRP have. And when you look at the actual use case potential of like XRP, for example, this is global and it hasn't even started yet. We're looking at, and there's videos to come up about this, November the 4th or November the 5th, XRP's technology, which there's a whole cover up of governmental things that I'm gonna go into as well. It's all very hard to get my head around it and actually display it simply to everyone, but that's coming up soon. Basically the Ripple technology, it, all in all, will be starting to be used in Europe for all the payments using the technology. So in November, something exci very exciting starts happening and that potentially could be the rolling out of the actual use case of XRP. And when you calculate the actual use case of XRP and you compare it to something like Swift Payments, who they might not necessarily take over, but they might join forces and use the technology with the Swift name, because Ripple don't care about their name being printed everywhere. Without changing the Swift name, XRP could just be delivering it on the back end. And obviously XRP's price would go up as a result. And so when you look when you're trying to use market cap, even the market cap chart to try and see, you know, how much will XRP be worth? And let's use the market cap chart to, to decide this. Let's use the Fibonacci's on the XRP chart and figure out what the price predictions are. Doing that is doing XRP such a an injustice. It's basically saying that if XRP continues to not deliver its use case, do what it's actually made for, then these predictions make sense, right? That 10 to $13, that's purely chart-based. And I, I believe it would get there if you just left it to the retail. But XRP is not for the retails. That's not what the point was. XDC, for example, is more of a retail token. But then again, you look at market cap, and it doesn't represent the actual use case and the actual scale that it will be delivering at when it does what it's supposed to be doing. And that hasn't even started yet for many of these coins. And now I'm moving into the area of, okay, where am I exiting then? What am I exiting into? And when you're looking at XRP prices, I'm hearing everything from very smart people, significantly smarter than who, I mean, at the very least, a $500 XRP is like the lowest I'm hearing. And I'm hearing 
November being $50. This is insane. And I'm also seeing all the way up to $50,000 for an XRP, which would basically put every single person on this channel into millionaire status, if not billionaire status. And this is why I'm going to make a whole video about the government and the smoke and mirrors that are being put in front of us, including the SEC case, and why most people, 99.99999% of you, will never see or never reap the reward of a $50,000 XRP, because you'll be shaken out long before that. So you're looking at your bag of XRP and you're thinking, okay, the price gets to $50, let's say, and at my $50, I'm just going to take a percentage out. Or maybe I'm going to take 50% out. I'm going to reduce my power in earning by 50%. And I'm going to take that money. I'm going to take that money out and, and live with that money. That's, I'd be happy if, the, if it got to $50 because you're doing the calculations now. You go, great, that'd be $50 XRP would put me in a great position. And whether that comes in the sh in the form of a buyback when they buy it back for a really low price. And then there's just a lot of people who don't think about the future use case and just take it and just say, okay, you can have 50% of my tokens and I'll live on that. And and seal the rest. But ultimately, what we need to be understanding is that XRP will only work and it will work only at a high price point. It will become almost like a stable coin at a high price point. That high price point has to be four to five digits. It has to be, otherwise it can't handle the amount of transactions that will be happening every second. The price would be considerably volatile and you can't have a coin like that because its whole point is to not be volatile and provide people the opportunity to hold large amounts of XRP for liquidity purposes and also to transfer with low fees across the globe. You need a high price token. Same with XLM and XDC. They both need to be high price point coins to work. And when we think about it, they are the only coins in the space that do what we need to happen. So if you're looking at lots of coins thinking, oh, should I buy this coin? Should I buy this coin? The chances are, if you buy a coin, there are multiple others in that same space competing for one position. But in this area, in cross-border payments, XRP, XLM, and XDC are this like trifecta that are providing everything that is needed in the financial system as a trio. They're not trying to step on each other's toes. They're not trying to provide the same products. They're all doing different things that come together perfectly to settle all payments across the world from person to person, institution to institution, country to country, all across the globe. Those three are going to be doing that. They're going to be handling everything financial. So there's no others to choose. There's only three. And they all provide something slightly different and they will all be needed in that future world. There's no other competitors. And because we need such a high stable price point, the absolutely logical thing to do if you are a believer in XRP, which I'm increasingly finding it difficult to make an argument against XRP. The strategy should be, from a logical perspective, if I'm Spock and I'm Vulcan, if there's any Star Trek fans out there, you'll understand this. But if I only think in logic and without emotion, the strategy should be any buyback scheme that they give me, my thought process should be they're offering me a buyback so that they can pump the price up way higher, make me think I'm happy with my bag, pump the price up way higher to cater for all the institutions, to get to that stable point that's way up there. And all the coins they're buying back, they're just distributing anyway into the institutions. So they're actually, everyone's getting a good deal except you. The logical way to go about this would be to hold your XRP, never sell. That's right. I said, never sell. They're more than happy for XDC to have their own technology because they understand there's multiple facets of this financial market across the globe and XDC provides it really well for their section, like that peer-to-peer -peer transferring of money. XRP is dealing with a different thing, institutions and, and banking systems. So knowing that XRP understands the value of XDC, but doesn't want to step on their toes, I see it as unreasonable to think that the XRP ledger and XDC won't have interoperability at some point. And what, what do I mean interoperability? being able to spend your XRP through XDC's ledger and being able to connect the two. Obviously that would require, not obviously, because this is more specialist knowledge than I ever thought I'd have, but what there will be in the future is wrapped XRP. And that wrapped XRP will be able to convert your XRP into XDC obviously instantaneously for payments in day to day. Acknowledging that there will be wrapped XRP and there will be interoperability between XRP and XDC 
which handle more of the day-to-day -day transactions of normal people. And then we pair that with the idea of previously we were going to take our money out of crypto into dollars. I'm thinking, why would we convert it into dollars? XRP will take over banking and debt. They'll be lending you value, right? The whole banking system will be done through Ripple's technology. You'll be able to stake your XRP with institutions, not on your ledger, not for this like two, 3% interest on your ledger or wh wherever, we're talking 7 to 15% with institutions that hold loads of XRP for liquidity, you'd be able to use your assets as collateral and earn an interest between kind of 7, 15% with a trusted entity and not spend your XRP, right? And with that interest, you'll then be able to spend it by converting it into wrapped XRP into XDC and spend it in your normal life. All the while, you haven't spent your XRP, you're just spending the interest yielded from the XRP financial system that has been built, the infrastructure that's been built in debt, all of finance and global payments. And to go back to my point that I made earlier, if there's gonna be a stable price for XRP and it's gonna be high, it serves you no benefit to sell early. You've also got no risk of selling too late. Here's why, because when the price does go up and it goes up and up, when it hits its appropriate value, let's say for example's sake, that's $10,000. When it hits its level, that could be lower, could be higher. I don't know. You'll know it's hit its level. How will you know it's hit its level? Well, it's because it will just go sideways. <laughs> Regardless of any transactions, it will be way up there and it will just go sideways and it won't go crazy. It will just go sideways. You'll know you're at the top because it will be flat. <laughs> it won't move. It'll be a, essentially a stable coin at that point. And at that point you go, okay, now I'll stake my XRP. Now I'll get seven to 15% with a trusted institution who are going to use my assets as collateral for their liquidity purposes. I'm going to get my interest yield. I'm going to use that through the interoperability between XDC and XRP to pay my lifestyle. And I am now financially free. And I haven't taken the risk of selling early or thinking I'm going to sell too late because the signs as to when to sell are very clear with XRP because XRP has to be stable. <laughs> so for me, I'm thinking about all of this and I'm thinking, man, I don't now have to even worry about an exit strategy for XRP. I just wait. Could it take me five, 10 years? Sure it could. But knowing that infrastructure of banking and debt and collateralization of your assets is possible and will happen between those kind of three coins that I talked about. And, and, and for many of you, I'm just going to throw this number out. If you've got 10,000 tokens in XRP and it gets to $10,000, you're a hundred millionaire. 100 millionaire. 5% on your 100 millionaire pays you $5 million a year on the lower end of that interest yield. I'm going to guess right now, you're not earning $5 million a year. And if I offered you right now to say, okay, instead of retiring in 2025, how about you retire in 2030, but you make $5 million a year. You go, ah, okay, <laughs> I'll work for the extra five years. It's all right, I'll, I'll just chill out, just make sure my bills are met and just be happy in that time as I wait. And the great thing about this, I'm sorry I'm going on and on, but you can see how kind of into it I am. There's no other competitors. It's not like you can go, Ripple might not actually get the contracts and the partnerships, but this coin might. There's like no other coin. <laughs> it's just XRP. And then you've got XLM and XDC who do different things within the same space and they all want each other. They all need each other because it will provide very different things that are all necessary to make this thing a reality. And everything that I'm seeing so far in the research about institutions and how it makes complete sense to have these low fees and quick access to liquidity and it's not tied up like, the, like it is right now in the traditional system with SWIFT, there's literally no reason why these institutions would stick with the old system. There's no reason. And if there's no reason, that means a transition is coming and we already know the tokens that it's going to be in. <laughs> it's like if everyone just did a little bit of research, it's, it's all there and decisions have to be made. You've got my thought process on what I'm even looking at for XRP. There's a, there's a likelihood that my XRP is never sold, never, ever sold. And actually the XRP that I hold becomes my wealth, becomes my generational wealth, becomes my financial freedom without ever leaving the XRP ledger. All that information leads me to that conclusion. And it's become very difficult for me to understand why I would want to buy anything else but that trifecta of coins, XRP, XLM, and XDC.
I don't, I don't know so much about XLM, but I do know that XRP and XDC both need a high ticket stable price and there's no one else doing what they're doing. So there's no competition. So either you believe that the blockchain is the better way to do it for institutions, which I don't see any other way that goes. In which case, it's either XRP or XDC or XLN. If you don't believe that the traditional system is flawed and you think that blockchain's technology or Ripple's technology that makes it faster and cheaper to transact and have more access to money quicker, I don't think that's the way that they're going to go and they want the old system where it's more expensive and slower, then obviously you've got the, all the other altcoins to choose from. Look, there's thousands. You can have fun. Go and buy your Shiba and, and good luck with it. For me, that feels like gambling now that I know this about XRP and the financial system. There's so much more I want to talk about, so much more. And the more I research, the more I realize I almost feel like I am so unqualified to talk about the technicals of all of this because so many people know so much more than me and are so much more bullish than me. So I draw the correlation there. The more you know about XRP, actually, the more you realize, you take the cover off, the more you realize what's about to happen. Up and coming on this channel will be more of my endeavors into the research, more of my findings, more answers to questions that I have. The next video most likely will be all about November the 4th and what that means and the smoke and mirrors that are being presented to us by the institutions to make sure that we do not buy when that is actually a complete lie. I'll probably record that right after this because I'm on a roll, but it'll come out later. If you're at all interested in talking to me one-on-one -on -one or having a monthly call with me to talk about your portfolio, exit strategy, thoughts and feelings, emotions, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can get access to those with a discount by joining this channel as a member. To join as a member, you just click here, you click join, and then you choose your membership tier. At the very least, you get access to the Discord community, which is just full of a bunch of smart, excited and like-minded people. So I urge you to join. Now I'm gonna say this, stay emotionless out there on the bullish side, stay emotionless. You know what XRP does, it needs a high ticket price to be stable, to work. It's the only provider of the service that the world needs, the institutions need on a financial standpoint. Remove your emotions and understand the potential of XRP and what XRP is planning to do. If you get offered a buyback $35, I think that would still be a mistake. It's not financial advice, I'm just telling you what's on my mind based on what I've found. You do your research, figure it all out on your own, but something tells me you'll come to the same conclusion if you do it yourself. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Loads more XRP videos to come. Stay emotionless. I'll see you in the next one.